Hi everybody. All right, let's just kick this off. Sidu was when we when we first planned on bringing Allcraft back, and we were trying to figure out who our first guest was going to be. Sidu was the person that we originally wanted our first guest to be. His schedules have just been absolutely crazy. We weren't able to make it happen, and finally, at the perfect time, schedules finally lined up, and it's literally what I, I guess. Uh, a day before you start playing in the uh, circuit? We play Saturday, so two days, I think. Okay, okay, yeah, and like it's gonna be live then as well, so yeah, two days, I wasn't even sure what day it was. So it's literally the perfect time, so thank you a lot for coming on. We have plenty to talk about with everything that's happened so far in the game, with everything that's about to happen with you guys and your team, and also I just wanna give a huge shout out to everybody who's watching and a huge shout out to our sponsor. Thank you very much for Party for making this entire thing possible. And uh, if you guys do want to check out the link below, do you want to throw a text over Cedu's name so it doesn't say something? So I, I'll take just, it, honestly. Just, I'll take it. So I, I, at this exact very moment, I'm frantically going through Microsoft Paint and erasing the part that says Summit and then writing in Cedu with the brush tool, okay? So I'm doing my absolute best. That's what I did. That's what? I never, th I never thought I, I'd be this famous. That's what I did, hey. but it didn't work when I did it. Well, you know, it, it's going to work now. At least I certainly hope so. But yes, you do. I really appreciate you coming on and everything. I mean, obviously, you know, you guys are about to play in a couple of days. And um, how do you uh, how do you feel like you guys are going to do? You, you think you're ready for the tournament? Is it time? You want the honest answer okay, or? Dude. Okay, dude, just 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 let us know. Just let us oh, know. man. I don't know if you've been following PvP lately, but if you're not a rogue or a Destro Warlock, you got you got some problems so we got a tough time ahead but uh you know yeah. maybe we can win okay All maybe right. i i, I kind of want to start not on the tournament just because okay. it happened very recently and i'm sure everybody's been following it i saw then ricky made a video about it I, and rex troy was really the one who kicked it off yeah. and that that's with sockets i kind of want to just start with that uh, i feel like people have been freaking out about it for i guess it's been close to a week now uh for, for anybody who didn't see basically sockets were affecting what your pvp item level is which affects scaling and if you put a socket on a piece of gear it would change how you were scaled essentially making you do less damage uh they've they uh, there was also a way to make it i think rex troy released a video that basically said if you in the gates added the sockets you wouldn't be penalized so you would only get a buff they've removed that since from the game uh and i kind of just want to start with the scaling discussion because i feel like cdu when we had you on during legion we talked about scaling a whole bunch how do you feel about pvp scaling in general i kind of just feel like it's unnecessary and complicated it just doesn't really make any sense i actually i've known about scaling for a quite some time now, but I didn't really know it was affected by sockets. I don't know if you guys remember, but I actually posted some videos on Twitter where I'm attacking someone with literally zero gear and they have 70,000 health and I hit him for 100K and they survive. Like mm -hmm. it mathematically, it just absolutely makes no sense. Um, and the fact that someone even found this out, like testing, okay, I'm making my character stronger. Let me test to see if this actually works is it's, it's just so strange. You know, it's just something that should never exist you shouldn't be getting gear upgrades or upgrading your gear in specific ways and be getting penalized for it like that is not what an mmo is all about um i just don't understand why it's necessary if you're under geared you should die you know if you don't want to pvp turn war mode off um the problem is that like there's such a massive gear differential and i think that's really what blizzard's trying to stop because like they've kind of created a problem that they need to have at least a partial solution for because you have people that are in like 385 gear and people that are in 485 gear and there's just no way that you're going to win at all and I, I think that the problem is created mostly from blizzard adding in all the different raid difficulties and having such a massive power growth between these different patches that they feel like they need to add in these systems but you're right that i think they're just counterintuitive on a fundamental yeah. level too yeah, it kind of it kind of seems like they're contradicting themselves almost in a sense too. Like they're making it so you're scaling up really fast, but then at the same time they're like, "Okay, we don't actually want you to scale up that fast, so we're going to try and like, you know, close the gap a little bit." I remember in specific seasons and different expansions being one or two seasons behind completely on gear, 
and still being relevant. You know, you'd be like, oh yeah. man, maybe we would have yeah. won that. But now it's like, if you're one season behind right now, you're playing in last expansion. Like you oh, cannot yeah. even compete. It, it's crazy. It's absolutely insane. It, it's in really weird ways as well. I, I mean, the amount of tweets that I saw about people just being like, yeah, I want to play, but I can't really find anyone to play with because my gear is so far back. I don't have the corruptions. I don't have X, I don't have Y and Z. And then it's only further confused when you have the, the scaling. I kind of want to jump in a time machine and think about a bunch of the old weird things that happened with scaling because there were just like multiple things that have happened in this expansion alone not even going all the way back to legion like i, I remember you guys were actually the ones who figured out some of the crazy stuff that was going on like all the way back i guess this was last when it first Blizzcon? released right yeah yeah right when it was first released like was it wasn't it you guys who figured out the thing with shirk and toss and uh -huh. then and then also I, I think it was trill who was the one who figured out uh he could have his azurite laser beams from the uldir azurite scale up separately and then also he could have his bile tusks proc separately so like you guys were figuring out a bunch of weird stuff with scaling two years ago at this point oh my god yeah i mean we we've, we've known it was for a like we've known scaling was really bad for a while um when tournament realm was originally released your character started off in full green gear and that's not the case anymore. But when um, Tournament Realm was first released the, the year we won BlizzCon, I think it was 2018, if you left your full green gear on, besides Azerite, you did more damage. And it was it was significantly more. And we, we actually didn't use it in any of the tournaments or anything, but we were afraid that people were going to do it against us. So it like, was actually like an overall advantage to use green gear in, in yes. the game. I, and I mean like, insane advantage your azurite abilities were doing more damage and percent based damage abilities like for example mana burn and rain from above were doing like double or triple damage like it was actually crazy it was in, it was insane that is it made absolutely no insane yeah yeah i mean I, like... I think it might have gotten changed um at some point because remember when level like 111s and 112s were killing level 120s yeah, like you're yeah. getting by people eight levels lower than you. So that first iteration got changed. I forget which patch it was actually in, but yeah, like that that got changed. I think basically what was happening, and I could be totally wrong. It was just what it felt like with the way that all of those things popped up. It was almost like your item level would scale up solely based on item level, and all of your gear would be pushed up almost in the same way. I could be wrong about how this this was working this is just what it felt like so if you had something that had a proc on it that proc would also get pushed up even if that wasn't the weakest piece so if your azurite gear was let's say it was item level 10 just to keep the number simple and then all of your other gear was item level one when the gear got pushed up that level it would 10 multiply piece, the azurite gear damage yeah. exactly yeah. exactly yeah. and that got fixed relatively early but it's just one of those things that just kept happening there's always going to be these weird things with scaling and I, I remember back when we had pvp templates however many years ago that was uh, I, I feel like a lot of the pvpers wanted pvp templates i'm pretty sure c do you even at first wanted pvp te templates before it was actually iterate or actually um we actually had it to mess around with it and it's one of those things where integrity is obviously something you want to see in pvp like competitive integrity you want to see all of these different things that allow you to actually be determining your wins off of skill rather than just gear do you yeah. think that this does that at all does this cause people to be more skill based or is gear still something that's going to make pvp change i mean i guess in the grand scheme of things like the more player uh the more geared players should still be advantaged um and it shouldn't like you know the more skilled player should win as long as like the formula is working out properly which it doesn't seem to be because according to is it rex rex troy is that his name well mm -hmm. i think that it is working out properly why do you think it's not well, according to his test, when you gem stuff, you're taking more damage and dealing less damage. That That's his theory with his video. Um, well, so that would mean that it's not working out properly, right? Well, that means it's not working out properly according to what you think that it should work out like. But Vinruki did testing for it. He confirmed what Rex, Toy, Rex Troy originally uh, thought. And then Blizzard went back and they changed it to make it to where you can't make the work around and so the sockets do effectively handicap you um 
Well, yeah, I, I think that the reason that, okay, the, the reason why they had to take that out of the game was because it's super degenerate, right? Oh, the, yeah. the, like, they had to take the workaround out. I think that they might still change the socket thing, but it probably takes a, a lot longer, right? Uh, I, I think it's probably a more difficult change. The workaround, for anyone who doesn't know, basically what you would do is you would put all of your gear in void storage, it would remove the sockets from the gear because it removes any additional things that you've added to the gear, any progression you've added to the gear. Then with a shitload of mementos, you would just keep adding sockets every time the gates would open and you would just get a pure advantage. And it's like 10% increase in output, 10%. You, you didn't even need mementos. Day. You just had to buy gems from the auction house. It wouldn't actually remove the socket. It would remove the gem. Oh, so it was, wait, actually, it was really? actually easier. It was actually oh, easier. Oh shit! I thought yeah. it was way harder. Yeah. Sorry. No. Wait. Oh, that's actually yeah. Yeah, you just put it in void easy. storage. Yeah, it clears the gems, right. and you rejoin, and then you equip the gems in the starting area, and it gives you ten percent yeah, like, more damage. It takes damage. like one minute. Yeah, yeah, it's not even a big deal. Oh, that takes like yeah, that takes like no time at all. That was a mistake on my part. I thought it was much more involved. So yeah, that that's obviously something that they had to get out because then you actually have an advantage for being completely degenerate, not just their system, right? Um, I, I'm assuming that they probably will change the, the gem thing, though, too. I think if it's working as intended, I don't imagine they would, but yeah. Well, I, I just don't think it's necessary, is all I'm saying, but, you know, what well, can you do? I, I mean, like, if they're gonna make it to where it works that way, I feel like it's just, it's almost, like, demoralizing for people to progress their characters and know that exactly, whenever they're agree. progressing their characters, they're potentially handicapping themselves in pvp and if none other thing then it's just it's not as good as what it's supposed to be and just constantly feeling scaled down and like kept by the same in like near everybody else you can't like really advance and like get really cool stuff and you know earn anything interesting it's also it seems really sketchy that there's like no formula you know what i mean like we're trying to figure this all out like it's it's very you know kept in the dark like no one actually knows what's going on like we're doing like um pretty extensive testing with if having 485 gear over the 475 gear from the last couple bosses is even worth it and mez doesn't think it is like he mm -hmm. thought that having like gushing wounds on 485 pieces was really really crazy but he's starting to think that he's just getting overscaled and it's it's lowering the gap like it might be an increase but since they're like not perfectly statted he feels like it's a net loss. Uh, I don't know. It, it's really strange. So, so do you feel like they're going to carry this system forward into Shadowlands? I hope not. I don't see any reason why they should. So hopefully uh, after all the feedback that we've given, because I feel like it's been pretty like negatively viewed for the entirety of the expansion, much like many other aspects of BFA, mm -hmm. I'm hoping that they just can it. I don't know, man. I'm really kind of concerned about it. It just seems like it's like you're fundamentally lying to people whenever you're telling them they're hitting somebody for 70,000 and it's only doing 60. It's, that's, oh, man. Yeah. It's, it's so strange. It's crazy. Like, I, I don't know how people put up with that at all. Like, it, it should be immediately removed. I can't believe yeah, anybody okay. was even okay with it to begin with. I don't know. I, I worry, like, obviously, this is like a problem that's like partially with BFA, but there's nothing really to imply that this isn't going to happen in Shadowlands 2, which is what I'm worried about right there's it's just not talked about at all right it's just kept in yeah. the dark it's like one of those things that just is being swept under the rug so as of right now i guess i would assume it is being put into shadowlands it would be really nice if when things like this get brought up that they're at least uh you know discussed upon like you know hey we think the system's good maybe we need to work on it or you know just anything um but you know yeah this is it's one of the weird ones though too right because at, at the same time it's a system that if it is working as intended is kind of secret too so I, I feel like there's a large portion of the player base that probably doesn't even know that this is happening um i mean even look at the sockets right it took people who were playing the game for the entirety of two years rex trade just made the video like a week or two ago so right. uh, like after two years it was like yo wait guys sockets are bad um it, it's definitely a weird thing that feels very not MMORPG. And I am curious to see if it does move forward in the next expansion. But when we are talking about the next expansion, uh, I'm kind of curious, just, you know, obviously you have to spend a huge amount of time getting ready for everything with tournaments. Have you spent much time actually on on the beta, on the alpha, or in the PTR at all with like the, the newest event that got added? 
Um, I wouldn't say I've spent a lot of time on it. I do try and pay like close attention to it to understand like, you know, what's going to happen. Um, and I definitely have some concerns with Shadowlands. I feel like I feel like it almost seems like a very high risk expansion right now. I feel like if everything works out the way you want it to, it seems like they're adding a bunch of stuff that could be really cool. And the biggest problem right now that I think players are having is just like with Covenants being almost, you know, perf uh, permanent or whatever it is, and Conduits randomly having a cooldown. And I just don't understand why Blizzard is like so stubborn about it. You know what I mean? Because it, it feels like the system could be really awesome. You know, you would have a lot of flexibility. You can um, use them for different things, but they're like, no, you're going to be locked into this one and that's how it's going to be it, it just doesn't make sense to me why they're so stubborn but well, how do you feel like the oh. pvp community is going to approach that because like we've talked about covenants a lot but like you know i'm mainly pve and a lot of the people that we have on the show do the same thing so like from more of a pvpers perspective how do you feel like covenants are going to impact pvp at all like is everybody just going to go the same one or how cookie cutter is it going to be i don't i don't think so so from my personal opinion, I think that people are going to want to go after like the best class ability, not necessarily the best uh, covenant with like the main covenant ability and the main like soul binds, if that makes sense. Because some class abilities, I believe, are actually really powerful. Um, but it, it just seems really strange because I feel like there would be a lot of you know custom customization in how you can actually perform in arena based off which covenant you can go. Uh, some covenants have you know that CC immunity. Some have like interrupt uh, duration reduce some have um i guess like it would be like more of like a tanky build where you're not so susceptible to like dying in stuns and you'd be yeah. like stronger to rogue stuff like that so it feels like if you can like put that thought into the game and kind of understand how to min max you should be able to maybe switch it around and honestly from like a tournament player perspective i feel like we're going to have that flexibility on tournament realms because i don't think blizzard would lock us into that um on tournament realms <laughs> Which so kind of implies like, that, you know, it's important for competitive, for, exactly. you know, competitive integrity to be able to choose. Exactly. So I, I imagine that with that flexibility, everyone should have it, right? Like, uh, it just, it's, it seems really strange. I think that they're going to have a huge impact in PvP. Um, a really, really big impact. Some are, some are really crazy. Dude, so it looks, it's looking kind of like they're going to have a huge impact across ev everything, right? I mean, even a lot of the oh, dungeons. Have you guys seen up. the dungeon buffs? <laughs> dude, it's bad. It's like, so you have the Necrolord one, right? It's like oh, the haste dude. damage. It, well, yeah. they, they have one for each. Each dungeon has, I could be like a slightly wrong about this, but like each dungeon has something. Do you right? want me to read like, something? Like I, I got right Yeah. In. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Each uh, dungeon has a preferred covenant. Basically. Each dungeon, each dungeon, there is a specific covenant that gave that gives the group a massive buff in that dungeon. So I'll just read one of them. Use fleshcraft on dead slimes to gain a three minute aura to give your party twenty five percent haste, twenty five percent damage lust. reduction, yeah. and a th and an AOE damage proc. And there's another one, by the way, that's a ten second stun too. And this is all just activated by having a certain covenant. Right. That you can't change. So if you don't have that covenant, you literally you don't have want to find do somebody that, that has that one. Or, exactly. Well, the problem, like, what's really confusing to me is, like, they either have to do one of two things. They have to design the difficulty of the dungeon around people not having this or around people having it, which is going right. to be a really confusing problem. Like, I don't know what that's going to look like. Well, I mean, look at it this way. And j just to put that in perspective, because I think that's a really reasonable way to go about it, but just look at what player behavior already looks like. Classic WoW is a very good science experiment uh, yep. that, that already happens that, you know, it's a really fun science experiment. But when you look at game, like player behavior right now for players, you don't need world buffs in Classic WoW. But pretty much everybody who can go for world buffs is going to try to go for world buffs. Players want to have everything at their disposal that they can have. You do not need world bus to take it down. So let's say that the game is actually designed in a way where you don't need those buffs to beat the dungeon. People are still going to go for it. Like it's right. just how players it's, currently play World of Warcraft. It's fucking easy because you have a massive twenty-five percent haste buff. You have bloodlust for three minutes, and it doesn't mean that you can only use it once either in the dungeon. It's fucking insane. And the other ones are equally powerful. So I just have a question. Okay. I I feel like. Blizzard had this um, design philosophy where they didn't like players to be brought from what they had. And I think the philosophy was bring the player, not the class. And I feel like this this uh, Covenant thing is completely 
contradicting the philosophy they had because essentially you're bringing you know the class and not the player does that make sense because whoever's yeah. back into the right covenant it almost yeah. feels like critical of them to force you to pick someone with this specific covenant to do the dungeon as opposed to like when you're building groups like okay we need a bloodlust we need a magic buff we need a you know i guess i guess they're kind of they kind of brought that back a little bit with like intellect and fortitude and stuff like that but i feel like they broke that down and i don't know it just it seems so strange it seems so strange why not just give people like the ability like okay i gotta go kyrian for this dungeon i'm gonna go kyrian i gotta go vent there for that dungeon i'm gonna go vent there and like i feel like yeah. this is something that eventually there's gonna be so much pushback that they might eventually break down but 9.3 yeah 9.3 <laughs> Yeah, see you guys in two years when the game's gonna make sense. But and then it's I, gonna I think... be a huge grind, and there's gonna be no catch-up mechanic for all. And then, then by the time they add again. it, there'll be the next expansion. I, I think <laughs> yeah. to to Chuck's point, though, I, I think it's fine for their design philosophy to change over time, right? I, I think every time we enter a new expansion, some aspects of design philosophy are going to change, uh, which is good. It's how the game moves forward, and the players change, the game changes. But there are a lot of things in the system that are hypocritical to themselves, right? Uh, e even if that design philosophy did change and it was like, yo, we want you to be looking for, for X, Y, and Z. Like, there are so many things in that system that just don't agree with each other. And I feel like the entire landscape of Shadowlands, because of it, a lot of the things in the game that are good feel like they're the best that they've ever been before. I think the zones are incredible. I think that the... the the questing seems like some of the best questing that we've seen in a long time. The way that the story's delivered, which I know a lot of people don't care about, but I, I think it's pretty important to the game, feels better than it's ever been before. And then you get to some of the systems and they actually feel like some of the worst that I've ever seen in the game. Like I've never seen a more polarized expansion. Well, the stuff that I'm excited for they're, they're is designed, so good. They're designed to be, to basically counteract player behavior. Uh, I think that Blizzard has they're trying their best to stop people from min-maxing in the game, and they're willing to sacrifice the integrity of the game to reach that goal. And Dude, I think wait, that I'm they still will... surprised. So, sorry to cut you. People oh. in chat are going, the questing is awful. It Like, what? Have you actually played it? Like, I'm actually very surprised. Like, oh, and I... you've done a lot of the questing on your stream. Do you think the questing's bad? Me? Yeah. The only quest I did is how to get to an island. And I invented the quest. So I, 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 I didn't see that. Well, I got to the uh, island. That's a long story short. You beat the, yeah, you, you beat the quest. I beat Wait, the, I, I actually... I, I, I totally disagree. I, I don't think that the A lot of people... Well, I, I'll actually... I'll say this to, to like kind of bolster Rich's point, is that I did do like a very small part of the Bastion questing, and it seemed good to me. Like, I've heard that it was a good questing experience from a number of people, and so I, I'm not going to say it's a bad experience either. I think it's just that... You know, people, at the end of the day, it's kind of like whenever we went to Argus, remember that? And we go to Argus, and it's like, we go to this crazy new world. Graphics are fucking insane. Everything is really cool. And then you finally, you land, and you make your first ground fall onto Argus, the planet that we've heard about for years. And Illidan says to kill 12 demons. It's like, the more things change, the more they stay the same. I mean, at a certain yeah. point, I think that people want to have, like, this new revolutionized questing experience, but I don't think they really know what they want yet. But they know what they don't want. And I think that's why you're getting pushback on it. But I, I can yeah, see why. I, it's hard to say. Like, I don't know how they can I, do it see, any better. The, the, reason, the reason that I, I bring it up is, like, you go to Ardenwald, for example, or Ardenwild, however the heck you say it, the furry mm -hmm. zone, yeah. and you, like, so the quests, even just the kill quests, the ways that they've made these tiny tweaks on them, I actually think is really good, even though it does stay overall the same. Like you hit a mob and you're collecting souls from them and they run back to something. It's visually really, it's a lot better and it feels new. I can understand if people don't like it, but I, I was just kind of surprised to see people. Questing is not something that I'm concerned about, basically. That shit expansion. happens. Like the thing is, yeah. I thought BFA questing sucked. That's mainly because like I started from Legion gear, but I, I, don't, I don't really worry about it a whole lot. I think that really... What, one thing I do worry about is that people are going to have to make a covenant choice before they actually fully interface with all of their covenant abilities. And I think that's really bad, especially mm -hmm. if doing that is an irreversible decision or not irreversible, but, you know, a punishing decision. Yeah. And with that, too, Chuck, like when, when we look at the game as a whole, right, and, and how this decision is actually made, 
for for a player like you whose focus is pvp in a, in a lot of ways it's not like you don't play other aspects of the game like do you feel like you're going to be in a weird place with a covenant position when you know you need to do a dungeon to get a piece of gear or you just want to play a dungeon or, or go out into the world and quest i mean personally for me <clears throat> fortunately i only really care about one aspect of the game right so i'm going to pick the covenant that i feel like is best for pvp which is probably a lot different than most other people in these situations like i don't really care if i'm not the best in mythic plus and i don't really care if i'm not the best in raids and stuff i might not even do them for the most part um but the thing that is confusing to touch on what asman said is i'm in a situation where i'm going to you know thoroughly test the beta to make sure that i know which covenant is going to be the best but a lot of people are not in that situation so they're going to be they're going to be forced with a challenging decision immediately in which they don't really have too much knowledge on, right? So it's like, if they want something that is overall the best for everything, there might be a specific one. If they want the best that's in Mythic Plus, there might be a specific one. If they want the best for PvP, there might be a specific one. And this changes for every individual class. And if they're not thoroughly testing this, and it's almost irreversible for what you said, or punishing, it just seems like a really, like, a really bad system right off the bat. You know, it's just almost like you're starting off on, on the wrong foot. Um, there's definitely going to be a lot of people who maybe don't watch streams or play casually that just don't, they don't know what to do. And they're just going to pick one and then they're going to find out it was the wrong one. And then there's going to be issues. That's what I kind of worry about is that it's going to create a system where people end up making the wrong decision and then feel bad for making that decision and then feel locked into that decision. And I just like, I, I know obviously like you can draw a parallel to, you know, your covenants and your classes, but I don't think that we need another class. I don't know. I just, I, I don't think so. And at least not with the same level of, you know, like you're basically forced into having that exact class and you can't go back and forth. Right. And that's what, that's yeah, what the, I worry about. I, I the just shame worry is, I, I don't know how much, like I actually messed around on the beta quite a bit and you can make a bunch of different cool builds for each class, which is nice. I actually yeah. really like the customization. I, I yeah. actually think it's cool. But the, but, accessi but the accessibility is just so bad. Yeah, exactly. Like the customization is not actually there, right? It, it's more there on the beta when you could just randomly draw up a tune and say, oh, I'm going to do this covenant. I'm going to try this out. Like there were a lot of fun things to mess around with. And I actually felt like I had a class again. There are so many things about the covenant system that are good. Just the entire system dies because it's one choice. And if it was spread out, I would be very excited to to see what it was like and actually try out a bunch of the classes. I even remember, I, I guess this is when stuff got first announced. You 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 like messaged me about priest and you're like, oh my gosh, this ability yeah. is like the coolest thing ever. I, I it's the, I forget what the ability was even called. Thought steal. So is that like still like one of the abilities that you're super jazzed about for oh, one hundred percent. Holy priest in Shadowlands is probably going to be my favorite healer spec of all time in any single any expansion it's like they they took so for the last couple expansions they like completely separated discipline and holy and they made holy like really clunky and they finally decided that they like wanted to combine them again and holy priest is going to sound really overpowered but just some of the things that they're getting is uh prayer amending is an instant cast again which i think a lot of people would be excited about especially in pvp uh they got power word shield back which discipline only had so once again holy has that um they didn't really have a lot of their damaging spells um holy got all that back they got mind blast back they got shadow or death back which you can also use to break crowd control um they got holy fire back as a cast and um they also have shadow or pain so you can continue to dot people they have a stun and they have a fear the ability thought steal steals a ability from your opponent this is a pvp talent by the way it steals an ability from your opponent for 20 seconds and while you have that stolen ability they can't use it so if you fight against a mage and you don't want to polymorph it's it's a specific ability so you kind of already know it's preset you take their polymorph and they can't peel for 20 seconds you fight a warlock you take their fear they can't peel for 20 seconds but you can use those abilities while you have their ability stolen so, so that's you the could stealing start polymorphing part. as a priest exactly <laughs> it's actually shit. stealing yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it's, cool. it's really insane that's, That's really, really awesome. cool. Like, I actually super, super yeah. high skill cap too. I think so. You done take a very their abilities and you use them. Like making I think skill cap incredible. abilities in, in Shadowlands. Yep, I think it's incredible. And then it just they're getting power infusion back, which you could use on a partner. Twenty five percent haste. You could use it on yourself. You could use it on your you know your partner if you want. Um, 
I'm trying to think if they got anything else, but just just off the top of my head, it, it seems like the coolest, the coolest class I've, I'm going to ever experience, you know, with a ton of stuff with Covenants, and uh, it's they, they've unpruned so much. I think that's, like, the biggest um, selling point of Shadowlands for me, is I'm saying all this stuff that they got back, there was so much, so many abilities that were unpruned to try and make classes feel fuller and have more uh, decision-making, more utility and stuff like that, and I think that's the thing that's most exciting for me for Shadowlands. So... I think that Thought Steel is a really good example of why the Covenant system to me is, is somewhat weird because that ability is super useful in one area, right? It's great in PvP and in well, certain PvP areas. Talent. But but like go, go a step further though and look at so many of these different abilities that are being added inside of Shadowlands, right? Like the actual abilities that are getting added in Shadowlands. Because like you said, the the deep pruning is where you're getting most of your, your stuff that you're going to play around with. Then most of the new abilities are coming in, coming in Covenants. And a lot of them feel like that. And they're not balanced. Like they're, they're not balanced. They're really strong in one area, which I don't think that they should be balanced around being just general boring shit. I think there should be abilities like Thought steal. I think there should be abilities like the Kyrian Spear for warriors. There should be these abilities that feel really good in one situation because that that's what makes the classes feel textured and makes them feel dynamic. Oh, yeah. And the argument of having stuff balanced and the covenant abilities only being 1% apart and abilities only being 1% apart, I feel like that argument is an argument that kind of just causes us to shoot ourselves in the foot and have more homogenized classes uh, headed into the next two years of gameplay. I just like being able to choose which type of thing I want to excel at and being able to make an easy choice without a whole lot of, uh, of friction there is what I really like. I, I like being able to change talents, change specs, and, and do different things based off of the situation. I think that makes it more exciting. Uh, I don't want any more uh, permanent choices that you have to lock a player into because I don't think that they focus and they, they fit together with WoW in the same way that they do with a, a single player RPG. I don't think it's really fair to compare WoW with Dungeons and Dragons or something like that because there's just a completely different player dynamic. And I hope Blizzard starts understanding that. It seems like right now, and this is like a big issue that I have with also the raid encounters too, is that I feel that so much of the raid encounters and so many things in the game will have to be narrowed down in terms of the scope of their mechanics in order to not overly empower one covenant. And that's one concern that I do really have. And also, like, there's just purely the completely selfish reason that I want to be able to use all four of my abilities for the Covenants. I think they're all fucking cool. And I want to be able to use every single one. And I, I just like to see more variation there. But I, I really do like, especially with the unpruning and beyond the unpruning, I like all of the Covenant abilities because they can be used in a lot of ways, offensively and defensively. And that's kind of what you were talking about, Sidu, before, with using Thought Steel to stop a CC or using Thought Steel to use a CC to land a kill for your team. That is a really, really cool mechanic and a dynamic. I like it a lot. Definitely. 100%. And, um... I just just between people that switch specs and stuff like for example mez plays unholy and frost like if unholy has the best covenant as this one and and frost is the best covenant as that one it's just it's putting players on this this choice where it's like you know you're, you're not allowing them to explore more of the game you know what i mean um and uh, you're not allowed to play alt specs well i can't say you're not allowed to play but you you just put yourself in a weaker situation i just don't get why they're so stubborn to letting players have fun you know what I mean? It's, just... it, it, it's all uh, mandatory fun. That's what it comes down to. It's mandatory fun. And, you know, you have to do this thing. You have to do that thing. And, I, and like, also, everything feels very on rails. And I, I don't know if you feel the same way with, with BFA. But I never really felt, like, a strong sense to farm Azerite power. <laughs> because I just knew that if I worked hard now, my efforts would be halved in two weeks. Like, all right. the time that yeah, I spent, I never, it would be like I never yeah. did it either. I think the only people that did it were like the world first raiders that wanted to yeah. get a kill within the first week. Yeah, it's like a, it's like, like a high end raider thing. So it just like kind of creates a uh, it, it creates a culture of of apathy, and I don't think that's good for the game at all. And, yeah, it snowballs, yeah, right? Yeah. Is there something like 
Azerite power and Shadowlands, I haven't really paid too much attention. There shouldn't be, right? There is, like, anima power, but I really don't think that that's going to be the same thing. And just a question, I feel like you know more about this than me because I haven't done it a single time. Like, what is Torghast, like, what is the goal of that? Um, is that going to be something like Visions where you're just going to be stuck with them for the entirety of the expansion? Or is it something that's actually fun or... I, that, that's also so, one of my big concerns. Did, that, like, did you like Visions? No. Well, I did yeah. it first, actually. I thought Visions were fun at first, and I thought they were challenging. And then when you got to that point where you just autopilot through them and they were mandatory and you had to do it multiple times a week in order to progress the power level of your character, then yeah. it got pretty bad. I can agree with you there. I think uh, Torghast will probably reach that point for a lot of people, and it really just depends on like how dynamic they, they make it. Because did you ever play Diablo 3? Not really. Not I really. mean, a little bit. But Good call. It, are you talking about rifts uh, or something? Yeah, like... yeah, greater rifts. The the problem okay. that I, I'm seeing with Torghast and one thing that I worry about, and I'm not really sure uh, if this is going to be the case by the time that it goes live, is that there's not really a lot of things that actually are different in the diff in the uh, in the the rifts. You have like the layout for the map. You have the mob types, and then you have the boss type. And the mob types change every few levels, and then the boss, you know, is going to be different every single time. So whenever you're talking about these, like, random events and how Torghast is supposed to be randomly generated, you're not really talking about random. You're talking about three separate roles. So mm. you're not really... It's, like, the point where probably by the time that you do, like, 10 or 20 Torghast runs, you can pretty much predict whenever you see the beginning of an instance what the mob types are going to be and i do think that's going to get boring for people and i have seen like i worry that torghast will end up turning into a chore like what you're saying with visions yeah and that, that definitely worries me yeah i don't know really what to say about that i'm not sure yet I, i'm i think if torghast is good shadowlands will be good and if it's not good the expansion won't be good because they're putting a lot of effort and time into developing torghast and if that falls apart, it could be Mythic Plus for Legion, or it could be Islands for BFA. Oof, oof. I feel like I feel like the entirety of the expansion hinging on, uh, hinging on Torghast seems a little sketchy to me. But I I, I don't think it's going to be. I, I felt that way for for a little while. I, I kind of at this point feel like Torghast is going to feel r relatively like a chore. I, I think that. So basically the way the Torghast to our knowledge is going to work, like you have the ability to infinitely run it, but then also you're kind of getting in and getting out and using it as power progression for your character to unlock legendaries each week. Uh, the, the thing with it right now is it does kind of feel like to me, when I went back in after months of not playing it, I felt like I was just in a zone that I was doing my dailies in. I felt like I was just flying through it, breezing through it now, not really thinking about anything and just kind of passively moving and playing my character. And yeah, at a certain point I was like, wow, this is crazy, I'm doing more damage. But it wasn't something that really grabbed my attention or or felt fun or challenging anymore. I think that that can change a lot based off how they tune stuff and hopefully they add more abilities. But it, it's just really, I, I mean, Asmund, I'm not sure if you've played it recently, but I really do feel like every Torghast run feels pretty similar after you've done a few of them on a given class. Well, yeah, because it's the same people that made... It's the same company that made Diablo 3 Rifts. It's going to feel the same pretty early on because there's actually not as many variables than that people think that there is. There's just a handful of variables, and after you play it enough times, you're going to understand what those variables are. You create an algorithm in your mind, and it's formulaic after that. Uh, I, I'm very concerned about that, honestly. I, I am, and so... I don't know exactly like how Blizzard can fix this, but I do think that Torghast being good or bad is going to matter a lot for the expansion because it is it's fundamentally different gameplay. Like Sidu, you did Torghast at least once, right? No, I've never done it. Shit! Oh man, dude, you missed out. It was really fucking fun at the beginning. Uh, I don't I know think, what it's I like now. I was, I was busy like practicing for tournaments or something. Yeah. But I, I do remember people saying it was pretty cool, and I, I watched a couple of videos. I actually I actually saw your stream on it. Remember, you were doing it on Demon Hunter and you kept dying. I was getting a good laugh in. That's, that's good. That's good. Thing. Thanks. Uh, no, well, that was, that was back with the uh, when you actually started on, I forget what floor it was, but you, you started on 25. the higher floors. So yeah. And you went all the way up to 72. <laughs> and like my understanding now, and like uh, chat can correct me if I'm wrong about this, but Torghast is no longer infinite, right? 
I, I'm pretty sure they changed the infinitely scaling nature of it. Right now, uh, but I, I think that that's just uh, a, a testing thing Wrong? for okay. now. Or, li- or at least when I last yeah, went I on, it was like 18 it levels. Kept... Yeah, it's it. They, so I think one of the one of the things is is they keep changing different stuff to test it, which is also why you know Torgas could still end up in a really good place, and it's one of the features that I'm still excited for if it does go the right way. But yeah, there there have been moments where you could only do a, a couple, and you would have to start at different places. Now it's uh, it's in a different place as well. I think it will still be infinite once it does ship. I think they plan on having one of the infinite ones and then one of the weekly quest ones. Um, I have I have a couple more questions about Torghast. So, see. you said you get legendaries in there, and I know that the patterns that you unlock are like account wide, right? So that's supposed to make it more alt friendly, so you don't have to like run visions or excuse me, uh, Torghast a million times to get the legendary patterns for your alts. What happens when you're done with crafting your legendaries? Are you kind of done with Torghast? Do you do it for fun at that point? Like, or like, what, what is the purpose of it outside of getting those legendary patterns and crafting so, them? Yeah, so two, yeah, to, to our knowledge right now, I also believe that you get the legendaries in one of the slices, right? So kind of like how you do the 18 level thing right now, that would be like the 18 floor thing, that would be how you actually get your legendary. So it's a much more contained experience. So like you said, it would feel somewhat similar to Visions. Uh, and I think that they've also kind of made it seem like they're going to add legendaries throughout the expansion. So there might be periods where you stop doing Torghast okay, because you don't enough. really need them. And then you go back in, which I think is a lot better because when yeah, you 100%. Look at, like even you just said a few minutes ago, you liked Visions when they first came out. And I think a lot right. of people did. And then it's like, OK, at a certain point, why am I infinitely just running around in this hamster wheel over and over? It never stops, yeah. Yeah. So I think that's a good thing about Torghast right now with what we do know. Yeah, it seems like that's a system that could definitely work. And I mean, them being alt friendly immediately with uh, Torghast is definitely something that's on the, the positive side. Um, and if you're not like feeling forced to do them forever, like I see people saying that, you know, it's for mounts and cosmetics and stuff. Like once you maybe feel like you're completed, you could do it for your own rewards. I think that's completely fine. But if it's just something where it's like, you need to do this X amount of times per week, or else you're gonna fall behind in character progression. Like that's where it's definitely gonna get stale really quickly. And from what I understand, you don't actually need to farm uh, a currency to get in, right? I don't know. Yeah, you're not able to. You don't have to anymore. They changed it. Okay. Yeah, that's that's also really really nice in my opinion. Yeah, I agree with that yeah. too. I mean, I, I'm happy with like the idea that Torghast is actually like gonna be something that's like new gameplay. And I like the idea of like Blizzard using the WoW engine and creating different types of gameplay in, in WoW that's part of like other games, same as like pet battles and Torghast is like a roguelike game and doing these different kinds of things. But I think the problem really lies in what you're saying, Sidhu, is making sure that people don't just view it as a chore. And I think that right. it is okay for things to just be cosmetic. And like, for example, I think islands would have been viewed much more positively than they are now if the rewards weren't tied to the highest degree of Azerite power acquisition. But because you right. have to work so hard to get Azerite power in islands, it makes people resent them because they want to be able to get more Azerite power. I agree, 100%. I actually was kind of excited for islands originally. Me too. And. Uh... They just it, it just fell off so quickly and i remember you saying that you like really early on in the expansion you actually thought pvp islands could actually be you know almost like esport worthy and Absolutely. then that also fell through really quickly as well so a little disappointing that was a disaster <laughs> uh, I, i'm very disappointed in that too I, I feel like blizzard really kind of missed out on a big opportunity there uh to have something that actually combines pvp and pve for like the same goal and you know it's like they they fit together and everything maybe it wouldn't have been as competitive as arena or something like that but i think it'd be accessible for a lot of people especially since yeah. there's different wind conditions and it, it's really disappointing that blizzard hasn't really taken that kind of stuff more seriously and i think it's something like warfronts for example where Warfronts, if Blizzard had iterated more on Warfronts throughout the expansion, I feel like they could have been okay. But they didn't really do that. They just did a heroic mode, and then they did Dark Shore, and that was it. They never really tried. Uh, it's it's really disappointing, especially, like, I, I don't know about you, but, like, whenever I first heard about this, I saw the Warcraft 2 tech trees. I was like, fuck yeah, this is awesome. And it turned out to just be... It, I, don't, I don't know how it could have been worse. I'm not sure. I, I, 
I joined my first Warfront and I was like, guys, where do I fight people at? And they're like, oh no, you don't. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll just AFK this. Yeah, I, I, I think that I AFK'd my first game. Warfront too. Like I even have like AFK strategies now in Warfront. So like I'll stand inside the tank so people can't right click my name and report me because the image of the tank is on the mini map and so they can't see my name. It's That's, like, yeah. yeah, these are the kinds of things that I do because they're so fucking boring. Like it's insane. And I hope that, uh, I hope Shadowlands has less of that kind of stuff. Like Warfronts, I think we're just, it, it's a, it's evidence of a lost opportunity, I think more than anything. And I, I'm not upset that Blizzard did Warfronts badly at first. I'm upset that they didn't do them better later on. Uh, I think that there's a number of cases, like I think Azerite gear right now is much better than it was at the beginning of the expansion. Where to a point 100%. where I would, say what? 100%, I mean, yeah. just. It was horrible at the start of the expansion. You can only acquire it through you randomly get it out of your box. Couldn't trade it. Yeah. You couldn't get it from anything other than dungeons and raids or randomly getting it from your box. I still personally feel like with this late in the expansion, you should just be able to farm the Azerite you want from Mythic Plus it almost as a catch-up mechanic, but it, it feels like that's just out the window. It feels like they don't care about people playing alt specs or, or alt characters at this point. Otherwise, they would have done more, but... Yeah, it's uh. I wasn't very happy with the uh, the echoes of Nylotha or the uh, the corruption vendor rotation. It just feels like oh, it's, it's player it's, unfriendly. It's unbelievable. I just it it makes no sense to me. It's one of those systems where not a single person likes it. So why have it? You know what I mean? Like there's there's no there's no benefit from it. A lot of people say oh to keep people <laughs> playing and playing, but it's like instead of like for example people that farm gushing wounds, which is like the number one PVP um corruption right now instead of trying to save all your echoes for four weeks and then just going from such a crappy power level to a much higher power level then slowly gaining them why, why not allow players to slowly acquire them and kind of farm at their own rate and instead of getting 300 percent stronger you know at week four you know slowly building their power up you know what i mean it's just well, it, 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 makes, it makes absolutely no sense to me you know what it, it felt like for me though too you know asman brought up the things with azrae and how it breeds complacency because oh if i if i just wait till next week then i'll be able to get all of this and with how catch-up mechanics work in general like most of the catch-up mechanics when a new season came around it was like okay everything that i've done the the past few months completely invalid now i come back and i get all of it the same way that that worked with the rotation of the vendor where it was like okay i need to wait a week there was no clear mental planning especially when it first came out and you didn't know when everything was going to pop up it was just kind of random there was no mental planning that you could actually do i personally was just like yeah fuck this game i like this is this is the stupidest shit i've ever Dude, seen like, it, it's it's like, like, why the fuck am i playing this man like it, the rotation was a month and a week i mean Come on, man. Like that that's too much. That's it's it's right there. It's right there in front of you, and you just have to see it. Like I just yeah. it, you can't make it any more straight up than that. It, it's very disappointing for me to and see. I know some a lot of people are gonna disagree with me on this, but personally, and and I'm excited to hear what C do actually thought about it if you take out the system of how you got the the, the bullshit. But corruption itself, I liked. I thought it was cool. I thought it was kind of I fun. I thought it was definitely a unique idea. Yeah. And it just ended up being with one of those things where there was a this corruption and people only ran one corruption and that was that. You know what I mean? It's a little bit different for PvE, but from PvP, it's you play this corruption every single time mm -hmm. and that's it. A lot of people were saying, you know, maybe only allow one corruption type in arena. Or like, you can only have one per, so you actually mix it up and allow you to have a little bit more fun. But... It's one of those things that actually was really cool. It, it was definitely very unique, and um, I like that it had a drawback and things like that, but it's just, now it's nothing but just like a, a damage boost or a stat boost or a healing boost. It's like, it, it just, yeah. Well, the, the main reason I wanted to get your opinion on it is because I feel like having progression on gear is something that is interesting, and whether or not we're gonna have it 
uh, in the next expansion, I, I think is something that's really important. Do you like the idea of actually having a piece of gear and saying, okay, instead of this gear just being a throwaway piece of gear, this is a piece of gear that actually matters to me. I'm going to add something like a corruption onto it. I'm going to add gem sockets to it. Do you like progressing a piece of gear? Or do you think once you get a piece of gear, it should just be that piece of gear, you throw it on and that's it? I, I see what you're saying. And I feel like it goes both ways. So I definitely, when you get a piece of gear, it's definitely nice to feel like you're upgrading it. But it also is really nice when you get a piece of gear and you're like, this is the best piece of gear I can get. And this is what it is. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. getting getting this is something that should feel really exciting. And I feel like one of the problems right now with the end of BFA is it feels like you're never at your your BIS. You're, there's always something to do. And I feel like that's actually really, really difficult to maintain. And I also feel like it makes it impossible to play uh, other characters and, you know, deal with being so far behind. Um, I feel like there there's probably much better ways to you know upgrade your gear um than adding corruptions and adding infinite sockets especially with how time consuming sockets were but um i would say uh i would say i think i like just getting you know my bis gear you know getting the stats that it is and and being happy with that did how, you like when they uh, go, go ahead Asma. i was gonna say how do you feel about the upgrade system for pvp gear in shadowlands i don't actually know how it works you want to explain it to me I was hoping that you could do the same. Okay, no, I, I don't actually know how it works. I'm going to assume that, um, and this is just completely random. Do you remember, like, in one of the expansions where you could upgrade, like, pieces one or two times with, Mr. like, Valor Pandaria. points or something? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. One, or, one or two upgrades. I assume it's something like that. So when you finally get, like, all the gear that you want or something, you have the option to upgrade it a couple more times uh, via extra conquest points that you have if you have nothing else to spend it on. So I assume there will be nothing wrong with that because you still essentially get your BIS gear and then you just bump up the item level a little bit. Um, and I think everything with what I'm hearing in Shadowlands sounds good. It's just a matter of like what they actually decide to put the item level at of PvP gear. You know what I mean? It's going to be normal level raid, then you got to upgrade it to heroic, then you got to upgrade it to mythic to be on par with like mythic raiders, or is it going to start higher and then even out? You know what I mean? So. I how think it's you, really just... How do you think they should balance that? Because right now, you have to be gladiator level in order to do a game that you, or in order to get gear that you can get out of a plus 15. Yeah, I think I think right now it's really bad. I think 100% high-end arena gear should be equivalent to, to mythic rating gear. That's my personal opinion. Um, so that means if you're queuing at 2400 plus, you should be getting 475 pieces as you would be in raid. Um, especially since obtaining pieces right now is so freaking random, you know what I mean? So, but like from so a it's vendor, like, yeah, it doesn't matter what item level it is because it's just going to be like versatility haste that you exactly. don't need. It, it could be something you don't even want. So let's say they take this, they take this um, method into Shadowlands where you can actually buy stuff off the vendor. Um, maybe this would be a little bit awkward. Um, so how would I explain this? So for example, if you were if you were not gladiator level. And I'm just going to use 475 right now because that's kind of like the cap in, in BFA. Um, if you were not Gladiator level and you were getting 460 pieces at Duelist, you have the option to upgrade your gear via Conquest points to 475 if you can't get that 2400. Um, but if you are 2400, you could just buy the 475 gear immediately. Does that make sense? Yeah, I feel like yeah, that of course. would be kind of an even system to give people that aren't hitting that rating the ability to still upgrade their gear. But people that are hitting the rating aren't just getting gear that's terrible because right now we're literally i don't know a bajillion months into the season and i'm still getting gear that's equivalent to heroic gear from 3000 rated arena like I, that that's stupid to me like i honestly I, I don't think that's fair it's not equivalent to the time invested like i look at doing a plus 15 and i compare doing a plus 15 which has a, a guaranteed gear drop at the end of it or for at mm -hmm. least two people in the group. And I compare doing a plus 15 to being 2,400 in arena. What the fuck? Well, there's also, Did there's like on, no man. chase. There's no chase with how it currently is, right? I, I remember the, so at first, when I first started playing WoW, I started playing WoW for PvP, right? Like that, that was really the reason, like when I started getting super into it, that was what I started, I got into. But there were certain things in PvE that I wanted to get. So then all of a sudden I found myself in dungeons trying to get that gear that I wanted. Yeah. And then sure enough, I was like, yo, I'm, I'm much better at this <laughs> and, I, uh, and I like doing it. So I started playing that, that side of the game a lot more. 
And then there was stuff that would pop up in PvP that I wanted for the gear for dungeons, and then I would go on spurts where I was PvPing a whole bunch. The game and the ecosystem of the game feels very good when there are strong pieces of gear in varied places in the game that you want to go for. You only play Arena right now if you hate yourself. And by an extension, you only play World of Warcraft right now if you hate yourself. That's just how I feel about the game. Like it, it's like this weird thing with how the rewards actually work. And uh, yeah, I think you should be have like big beefy pieces at the end of every type of progression in the game. I don't like. I I, I don't know what they were thinking about not having a PvP vendor in in, in BFA. I, I don't know. It makes definitely sense. Yeah, I'm very glad that like in Shadowlands they're kind of changing that. But I do think that it is really going to be tied to the item level of that gear. Because if exactly, you're able 100%. to buy the gear and the gear sucks, then what's the point? There's no point having the vendor, right? Yeah. 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 So yeah. Ho hopefully they don't screw that one up. But uh, there, there's a strong possibility, but hopefully they get that one right. And yeah. uh, I, I agree with Rich. Like, I don't think that PvP needs to have every single option of every single stat. Um, you know what I mean? I, I think having to mix it up and maybe you have to earn, you know, some pieces from dungeons or some pieces are better in raids or maybe just better optimized. Just having the ability to be like, you know what? I want to buy my, my weapon on my druid and I want to buy my legs and I want to buy my braces and my gloves. Having the option to pick what you want is completely reasonable instead of week one, this is what you get. And not only that, I realized the hard way on my druid that there's six weapon choices or something from PvP and they only put five of it on the quest. The actual piece that I wanted from PvP, I could not even earn from turning in my conquest cap. It's a random drop only. And the same thing goes for specific trinkets. It literally blows my mind. That's the, only, the only opportunity they give you to actually pick what you want on the random week that they decide you get it, I wasn't even capable of getting it. I was like, okay, I I've had enough. Had it. I, I, I did. It's just... Oh, just it make makes sense. no sense. <laughs> they just rolled the dice. They're like, all right, these are the weapons that you get. And the worst part of them, the worst part of it was one was Feral and one was Guardian. And I don't even play those specs. It wouldn't even let me get rid of those. I, I um, just, I'm really concerned, though, with the PvP vendor as well. I just hope they find a good place for it so we can actually find it. Yeah, uh, it's true. Uh, it's, I'm very concerned for all of us. I think we need a PvP vendor Hearthstone. Uh, that makes <laughs> Just, a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. Another Hearthstone. Automatically add, add it in your bag after you do one battleground. <laughs> yeah, that's the best idea I've heard. Flight Master Whistle. Idea. Yeah, I, I wish there was some sort of a way for uh, for people to be able to actually like obtain the PvP gear that they wanted. Like, I, I thought it was fine in Burning Crusade. It was fine in Wrath. I mean, 100%. you just you find in Cataclysm, you get the points and then you buy the gear. And then if you I get a high enough rating, you are able to buy the really good gear, and that's cool. Like, I, yeah. I, I don't know. It, it's like you don't need to reinvent the wheel whenever it's rolling. Sometimes that's just fine. I feel like they've tried to do that so many times, too. Um, and what I was going to say is I actually only PvE'd in Burning Crusade. And the reason I got into PvP is because I wanted to heal more in raiding. So I worked really hard to get 1850, which was the required, the sure. required rating for the weapon. weapon. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's three. how I got my PvE weapon. Yep. And that's like literally what inspired me to PvP, um, was working harder to get that stuff for raid. And uh, this is also probably a little bit of a controversial subject as well, but why even remove like a PvP stat? You know what I mean? Like why remove resilience? You know what I mean? Well, versatility um, should be resilience. Well, but versatility is actually really good in PvE as well, right? Unfortunately. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It just it seems weird that they have systems in place that feel good. They randomly went from resilience to PvP power. Like, why? You know what I mean? You just you just repainted it, and then they went from <laughs> PvP power to nothing. It's just... They're like, you know what? This stat that people actually want in PvP... We don't like this stat anymore. We're just gonna... We're just gonna get rid of this one. It's just... Ugh. It's, it's really kind of boring. And also, it makes, like, right now, a lot of people are stacking versatility in PvP, which I think makes gearing more boring. Like, versatility is, like, not really that exciting of a stat. Like, it's kind of funny whenever you have a lot of it and nobody can kill you, but it's not as fun as having a lot of haste or having a lot of mastery or crit or something like that, uh, especially in terms of, like, what you see on the screen. And for BC, it's actually really funny you say that 
because I had the exact opposite experience. I was only a PVPer, and the reason that my guild brought me in to do progression in like Sunwell and Black Temple is because I had the full season three and season four gear. So because I had all yeah. that really good gear, I was able to come into the raid and still do competitive damage, and that got me excited to raid, and I became a raider out of that. So yeah, it was it was nice that the the two yeah. worlds could you know they could uh, work together in a sense like PvP gear was actually decent PvE and PvE gear was actually decent in PvP given some decisions you had if you wanted to take more damage for more damage, you know what I mean? There was actually a decision that you had to, uh, to make there. And you would tell, right? Whenever you'd go into a, uh, an arena because you didn't have transmog back then, you saw a shaman in the full blue gear, you knew to train the fuck out of him. But if he was in red gear, you knew he had full resilience, so it wasn't really worth doing. Like, I, I love that system. I thought that was great. Uh, I I'd love to see them do more types of uh of like PVP specific things like that, like the stats, because I think it would open them up for creating other types of gear that doesn't necessarily have to compete with raid gear, which is I think the problem that Blizzard has right now is that how do you balance PVP gear with raid gear? And especially with something like Mythic Plus gear, because I think uh PVEers are really sensitive. I talked about this on my stream today, are very sensitive to having to do any PVE PVP. Like, do you remember the legendary cloak in Mists of Pandaria where oh, you had God, to get yeah. two wins of a BG and people were quitting the game over it? Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's I, like, I that's, that's some, there's something wrong with you whenever you do that. And so, yeah, that's one concern that I have, at least, is that, you know, making sure that you're not able to uh, have the two systems kind of cannibalize each other. Because, like, right now, I I'm pretty sure that uh, I'm sure Luigi can, can testify to this, too. Uh, is that right now, you have, uh, you probably spend 80% of your time, or not now, you probably have all the gear, but before, you spent a lot of your time doing PvE to get ready to do PvP. It was only PvE for quite some time. It was yeah. all farming, uh, collecting whatever to Coalition do visions, because yeah. you had to do visions, and then you had to do Mythic Plus to get your, your bit stats, because it was the only way that you can actually uh prioritize the specific gear that you want instead of randomly getting it through arena drops and then you obviously want to do raid because the raid gear is you know much higher item level immediately uh you get 475s right off the bat as opposed to getting only 465s at max level arena outside of your weekly chest so it's like at the start of the season you know people come on my stream and they're like when you queue an arena and it's like i'm trying to queue arena man like <laughs> you know i would yeah. i would love to but unfortunately, this is what we're forced to do. And if it was vice versa, yeah, it would definitely be... Uh... Oh, people would be crying like crazy. And like, yeah, like WoW, like I said before, I think WoW is mainly a PvE game. But like, there's no reason to not create at least a partial system where PvPers don't have to spend most of their time doing the other version of the game that they don't want. And this has already existed in Burning Crusade. Like, they've already succeeded. I don't, I don't think it's before. ever been this bad I, I definitely think that this final patch of bfa pushed it over the edge um yeah. because essences are disgusting and visions were disgusting and not having a pvp vendor was disgusting and all of those together formed you know the most absurd ridiculous uh forced content that you could have ever had but okay I, when i said essences are disgusting i only meant like what you had to do to farm them yeah, you know I mean, like some people come back to the game right now and they have to run multiple um, Asharas or whatever just to get Vitality Conduit or whatever it is. Oh, yeah. It's like, yeah. like, why can't people just buy that now? You know what I mean? Like, why do they have to spend three weeks doing a, a you know, year old dungeon that people don't want, even want to do anymore? Right. Like, yeah. Why is it time gated? Right. As well. Right. Insane. Like, you, you, like the, the time gated issue is, is definitely a, a problem in a lot of ways. I, I think the, the thing with a lot of the gearing, it's not even a PvP or a PvE issue. It, it comes down to the fact that they are trying to get you to repeat certain actions in the game way longer than you've ever had to repeat them before. And to keep you on the treadmill, they have to keep throwing gear at you. So there's more gear in the game, and all of that gear feels like shit. Like, uh, like all of the gear in the game is the most boring bullshit you've ever seen in your entire life. And the whole thing is, is just it's shitty little carrots on really obvious sticks. And that that makes the system fall apart fundamentally over and over again. If, if you actually had gear that you cared about, then you would be incentivized to, to run different aspects of the game. And one of the, the things that I think causes it, and I don't necessarily think that this is it's a bad thing thing for the game, right? But I think it's one of the things that started to cause that trend 
was the fact that uh, Mythic Plus got added, right? Mythic Plus, they, they had to create some sort of loot table for it. And I, I think that they really need to, to change how that loot table works. Because Mythic Plus are great. They're a lot of fun actually running the dungeons. But the loot inside of them isn't the most interesting. And I'm actually really concerned. And I'm curious how you feel about it, Sidu, if you saw it. The weekly chest, how they are changing it. I think that the weekly chest in its current iteration is, uh, I think it creates a lot of problems. Uh, did you see the newest version of it? Yeah, there's just ways to unlock more loot, right? Can you explain the version, Rich? Because I don't understand it. So they've updated it a few times. The last time that I checked, uh, and also if you guys want to want to check, uh, Hazel has a pretty good video on it. And I heard preached it, but I didn't actually get to watch it. I watched the Hazel video. It's in her weekly update from a week or two ago. Basically, the way that the system does work now is you have your weekly chest and it has three categories mythic plus pvp and uh mythic plus pvp and rating and each one of those three categories has three tiers based off of the amount of content that you completed now in, for, for this weekly chest the for pvp it's based off of how much conquest you unlocked for uh for the rating it's based off of how many bosses you've killed and for the dungeons, it's based off of how many keys you've completed. Now, inside of each of the three things that you unlock, it's also tied to the difficulty that you did them on. So let's look at the keys, for example. If you did one key, now you unlocked the first piece of gear out of the three. And if you did a 15, that reward level is now going to be capped. It's going to be its 15. Now, let's say that you did five keys. Now you've unlocked the second one because the second one is five. Uh, originally, the third one was 15 keys in the week. I think that they've already turned that down. <laughs> yeah, it was basically, it was like, it was five, 10, 15 keys yeah. to, get, uh, to get the third one. And, but the thing was, is basically how, it's, how it determines what your level of reward is to make sure that you didn't just do one 15 and then spam twos to make sure that you hit the cap. Whatever your lowest, in that number is that is what the reward is so if you did 14 keys at a high level and then you did the one two that third reward would be the lowest that's in it so if you did 50 keys but 15 of them were the max level then you would get the max level reward for the third one it's a little bit confusing it's kind of a mouthful but basically uh the 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 most that you would play uh like that that would be how you actually like the more that you played the more stuff that you would unlock and i think the thing that's a little bit concerning about it is it creates a system where everything kind of feels like a chore but they've already changed uh they've already changed the amount for quite a few of them and it seems like they're tweaking them a lot they changed the conquest amount already they, they looked at the dungeons and they looked at the bosses yes. um i mean from my point of view I feel like it's got to be a better system, right? But it still is going to be really RNG. So it's like, let's just say I'm doing arena as much as I normally do. I would unlock three chests for that week instead of one, right? Is what you're saying? If I if I hit all those caps? You could unlock nine rewards. Well, it's it's three per category. So if I was yeah. doing... Yeah, yeah, yeah. you only did one. Three, yeah. right? So that's great and all until you open your chest and all three options still suck. You know what I mean? Like that's the problem right is if you if you unlock all nine and all nine randomly still suck then you're then you're pissed you know then they're just it's really boring i do think it's uh it's nice that you can actually put more time in to potentially get more gear i feel like that's something in wow that you know it's 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 good oh, right I, I think people are misunderstanding sorry people are misunderstanding you're unlocking choices is what i'm talking about you get you get one choice i'm basically saying you sorry i i understand how that could be confusing you get one piece out of your chest Everything right. you unlock is a choice. It just gives uh, you more choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, still, when I say unlock here, yeah. But the, here's the other problem. So, like, CD, you brought up the one problem where it's like, um, if you basically open up the chest and there isn't anything good, look at it this way. Uh, I, I think that this is actually a, a kind of a big problem. Imagine that you get a lot of good choices. I know that that doesn't sound like something that should be a problem, but let's say that you're looking for two or three pieces of gear and you're not sure what the best one is, and now you you just farmed a bunch to try to get those choices, and then you don't see them again, and you experience all these different feelings of regret. 
the all of the sudden the own the pressure of choosing is on the player which it never really was with gear before you went to the boss it wasn't your choice whether the boss dropped your gear or not you reacted to it you rolled for it inside of the group you never felt like you made a mistake you were just killing the boss and trying to get the gear and i feel like making too many choices by by farming all of these things as much as having choice is a really good thing and you want to have choice in a game presenting the player with too much choice allows the player to make mistakes that they'll regret and i i know that that sounds i, I think a lot of people will disagree with that uh, off the rip but i actually do think it could be a problem i don't think it should be a problem personally but just to say something real quick it, it sounds like people were saying uh if you don't get what you want you can get a currency which i guess will help yeah. you what you want originally that's good. or that's good eventually which is definitely good but i feel like player choice is something that's important and i feel like the more of that that you take away um you know i think the worse the game gets and i think that's where we got to where a system is where you get random gear from pvp and you don't have a vendor anymore right this is almost like a pve vendor in a sense you know what i'm saying yeah so i feel like with at least with the the fact that you can get the currency as long as the currency is uh, a good amount like a healthy amount um I think that this system shouldn't be a problem. Maybe you do make a wrong decision, but I, I, I don't know. So uh, just to jump off the, the choice thing, look, it, I, I understand that everybody wants to sit there and say having a bunch of choice is the best thing ever. And that's what people will always move towards. People will always think that they want the most choice possible, but you're factually wrong if you think you want to be able to make a million decisions all the time. Well, you literally just get to a point at a certain point where you get choice paralysis. <laughs> and like, it, imagine you go to the supermarket and there are 8,000 different flavors of soup and you're trying to decide what type of soup you want. Only nine. I feel like this is a little bit of an exaggerated comparison. Well, here's the thing. Well, right? yeah, it, I'm trying to make people understand. Well, it matters. It, it, 8,000 to nine choices. It matters like what the scale of it is. So right now yeah. in the Mythic Plus chest, you have about a 1 in 150 chance of getting the thing that you want. So that means mm -hmm. that there's 149 ways that you can get fucked. So that's a very different universe than 1 in 9. I think that's a completely different universe. A 1 in 5 or 1 in 10. I am much more okay with 1 in 5, 1 in 9, maybe 1 in 10. But if you're talking about a 1 in 150... Man, that shit's never going to happen. And it's like you get to the point to where the goals are just so far removed from, like, the chances of, of reaching the goal is so far removed, you don't even give a shit about it. Like, that's kind of how I felt. Like, I remember doing the get a coup every single week and just, like, never expecting to get it. And it took months for me to get it. It was, like, five months. You actually got it? Yeah. How do you think I'm glad? She um, yeah, and, no, a lot, and a lot of people probably along the way just completely stopped, right? Like, yeah. it, it's one of those things where if you can't ever see yourself getting the item, if you can't actively predict getting the reward, at a certain point you fall off, right? You yeah. fall out of the loop. Like, I, I'm okay with a certain degree of, like, RNG. I mean, Classic had RNG. Burning Crusade had RNG. Every expansion has RNG. You kill the boss. Does Onslaught Girdle drop? Nope. All right. See you next week. It is what it is. But the chance of Onslaught Girdle dropping is like 5 or 10%. That's pretty damn good whenever you compare it to 1 in 100. Yeah. It's like you basically have to have a mount drop every single time that you want a gear upgrade. That sucks. Yeah, the new system definitely sounds a lot better, especially yeah. with the currency. It's a I massive without improvement. Currency, it would just be, just be still a shitty RNG system with just better odds. But the, I think the currency is what really uh, seals the deal to make it a much better system. Yeah, I agree with um, that. Yeah, I, the, the thing is, how are they going to implement the currency, right? Because the the currencies right now, how many currencies do we have in the game that that are all for kind of different systems? Do you think that there gets to a point where there are just like way too many currencies? Because you have your Azurite currency. You're losing a bunch of currencies though, right? So like, yeah. Rizum is gone. Echoes and Iolotha are gone um and then coalescing coalescings will be gone like they're, they're pretty much getting rid of all the currencies i would imagine oh, they usually but reset that, currencies besides gold. yeah do you think that the currency route like did you like how many different currencies that we had in this expansion okay. cdu um it doesn't really bother me i guess uh i think residual was fine just to help you get gear 
I do think that getting a specific piece of Azerite gear was incredibly overpriced, like to the max. Um, I think I was getting right now. I think I get like if I do my 15s, like 2,000 ish residuum a week, and I think it's 20k to buy a piece, as opposed to 4,700 for a random piece. You know what I mean? That that seems absolutely absurd. Like I would just it's I'm just hard. rolling random every single time. Exactly. So if it's like that for uh, the currency that you get if you pick no items, um, then that's going to be pretty crap. Well, you so compare it to BC. How long would it take to get a weapon? Like three weeks. And everything else yeah, beside weapons? What? Like uh, with like farming uh, PvP gear. Just ram drops. Well, for, for think, getting arena points for PvP gear. Yeah, I think I think about three weeks or so. Sounds yeah. right, yeah. And, and like all the gear was substantially less than the weapon. So you would get a piece of gear like every other week or every week. And that piece of gear right. was the best piece of gear you were going to have for the whole season. So you mm -hmm. compare that to now where you have to spend 10 weeks to do the same thing that you used to be able to do in two or three. It's too, it's, it's too long. Yeah. It was really bad with the Azerite. I, I actually never, yeah. I don't know if anyone else in chat can uh, agree with this or whatever. I never once bought a specific piece of highest level Azerite because same. it's literally five times as expensive as buying it randomly, you know? And then not only that, if you don't get the one that you want, you just re you just refund it, get you know twenty five percent of it back, and then just go for the random one again. It's yeah. just uh, I, I think it's a big issue. Really failed, so. Yeah, having the currencies be random as well just kind of gets rid of the point of the currencies, right? Like the the whole point is is deterministically over time finally getting the reward that you wanted. I, I hope that they don't have random currencies anymore. Nine currencies, we'll by the way, Rich. Outside of Mechagon Rich. stuff. Wait, what'd you say? Nine currencies in the game total yeah i mean I, I don't necessarily think it's bad to have uh I think a lot of currencies fine. but yeah yeah it's just like the the weird the weirder thing with the currencies this time around was some of the major power progressions for currencies that were looped into each other were all based around aspects of the game where you didn't play with other people right like you you would to get sockets for example which we thought were good <laughs> until the other day uh to, to get sockets for example you had to ultimately get mementos to get mementos you had to get coalescings and then you had to take those coalescings turn them into vessels to turn them into mementos and then you you got your gear which basically created an entire loop that involved dailies visions which visions I, obviously you could i thought play that was with good people. i think that it's good yeah, I thought that but good. i just hope that i hope that more of the focus on power progression is with playing with other players, right? Uh, it was just so much of what you needed to do with how long it took to get the right amount of mementos. It was just dailies, visions, you log out without ever playing with another player. That, that was one of the qualms that I had with it. Yeah, it's got a lot of problems. I, I think that, like, really, as long as Blizzard's able to nail the Covenants down for Shadowlands, uh, we'll be able to have at least a decent expansion. I, I think that, really, people's perception on the expansion is going to be definitely very much tied to Covenants for Shadowlands. I think Covenants are going to fill the place that Artifact Weapons and uh, that Legendaries filled in Legion. So if they get that right, people will enjoy the expansion, and if they don't, they won't enjoy it. I think that's really what the fundamental difference is going to be. Yeah, I, I think that, that that's all really important. I do want to talk, though, a little bit about everything that's going on with the AWC. with Because uh, you guys get started this weekend on the 22nd. How do you feel about circuits actually being a thing? I don't think this has ever existed before. Uh, I don't think it, it's round robin, right? And I don't think that you guys have ever had round robin like this before as a competitive format. Not in the AWC, no. Long, long time ago, uh, there was round robin tournaments, and personally, I actually like them a lot more. It feels like you don't get uh, heavily hurt by, you know, bracket RNG. It definitely feels like the four strongest teams um, in the region will move forward. Um, so I personally think round robin is a lot more fun, and I also feel like there's a lot of matchups that people want to see that may not necessarily happen um, with a regular randomized bracket. So I think it's uh, I think it's pretty cool. I like it. Also, like, what are the other changes for anybody who hasn't been following as far as prize pool and things like that? Like, structure-wise, how much has it really changed? Um, prize pool, I think, is kind of the same. I honestly haven't really paid too much attention uh, to prize pool. 
um, mainly because, you know, I don't think I'm going to be getting a piece of that pie this time around. Um, but the way it works now is with COVID, obviously, there's no land tournaments. So what they did was this is the point in the year where four teams from North America and four teams from the European uh, region would be going to a live tournament. But instead of that, it's just eight teams in NA, and eight teams in EU. Um, going in the round robin tournament and then the top four teams from those regions compete in like the final four which i think is maybe a double elimination bracket from each region um and the prize pooling is actually pretty good i think it was 500k total for this year and they just took 250 each um for each region so overall i mean it's uh it's quite a bit of money and you know from online it's actually pretty relaxed much more stress-free environment um you know besides me with kids screaming and dogs barking um, but yeah, it should be, should be good. I, I'm kind of, so I'm kind of curious. So you talked about how the meta has actually shaped up. Who do you think has the best chance of winning the circuit? Oh man, this is, this is a tough one. Uh, so cloud nine won the last three tournaments in a row, uh, playing almost exclusively mage warlock. There was a little bit of wind lock, wind walker lock in there. Um, personally, I feel like right now wizard wizards are like super volatile. Uh, because they play 500 bajillion percent haste. You leave the pillar, you get G-Pied 6,000 times, Chaos Bolted 6,000 times. Um, so I definitely think Mage Lock is going to be unbelievably frustrating to fight against, and it's probably almost a guaranteed win every single time they pick Tolveron Arena. Um, so that's uh, that's going to be rough. But I feel like right now, there is a very defined meta. It's Mage Warlock, uh, Holy Pally Warlock Melee, Insert, Warrior, Windwalker, Assassination Rogue, Feral Druid. Most likely we'll see Windwalker and Assassination Rogue win that matchup because I think they're the strongest melee. And then there's obviously Rogue Mage Pally, Rogue Mage Priest. And then there's going to be the occasional jungle. And that's the that's the meta. And then there's us. So you have that you have that circle with all the meta comps and then there's us. You guys have mushrooms. Yeah, so we're we don't we don't quite fit into that circle. We're not we're not invited to the cool the cool kids table. So we're gonna try and squeeze in there somehow. Okay. It it's gonna be a rough one. Yeah. No, no assassination rogue. No Destra warlock. We'll see I, what we can do. I, I it's it seems insane to me like how powerful like mages and warlocks are right now. Uh, I saw like some of the tournament games whenever. It's like they were playing, and like just to see two people that are really good at playing those two classes, it's like the other team didn't even have a fucking chance. I, uh, it's insane, yeah. man. I've yeah. been dealing with that for a year now. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to get the questions started, and the first thing I saw when I opened up the questions, <laughs> the first thing I saw is, "Yo, what if the PvP vendor has a rotation in Shadowlands?" <laughs> It's not funny because it could be true. Yeah, is that like a is that a Blizzard dev asking that just you know to test the water, see what people are gonna <laughs> how say, would you dude? Feel, yeah. yeah, how would what you feel it? if maybe they did that? You know, I think, I think that'd be the final straw. I'm going for world first, man. MBI yeah. team, I'm done. Final Fantasy 14 oh, cat God. wrestler, whatever the heck you yeah. you do in that game. Wow, that's actually the next question is about Final Fantasy 14. Oh, I'm just going in order. Uh. I'm not gonna even read it. It's a good question. So, guys, if you do want right now, before before we jump in right now, it, I, so many people do say the Final Fantasy 14 is god tier, like in the chat. I, I think the uh, I think the thing with Final Fantasy 14, and this is without playing it at all, it seems like the people who really like Final Fantasy 14 like are obsessed with it. They'll die by that game, and then everybody else is just like, "Yeah, this game's not for me," and that's great. That, that, that means it's it's doing a good job. Like it's it's serving its fan base really well, and not just trying to get a bunch of people who don't want to play the game to play the game, right? Which is cool. Uh, I think I don't want to play that game though. Uh, if you do want to submit a question though, use the hashtag AllCraft. I'm looking on the Twitter right now to all actually right, ask. All right, what's the first yeah. question? What do you got? Uh, the literally the first question is why does Asmongold look like a boiled egg? So we can wait for more questions. I actually to come saw. Through. I refreshed my Twitter. I saw that one too. I well, how do I look like a boil? That doesn't even make any fucking sense. It really doesn't make any sense. Like, I was gonna stupid. not ask it. I was stalling. I was like a stalling Luigi, waiting for a few seconds to hopefully get some more but questions. You just had to go yeah. with that one. You you put me on the well, spot. You hey, said, "What's the I, first well, question?" Man, I already saw it. I was primed and ready for it. Okay, I, I can handle it. Sodian <laughs> chat says yokes on him. 
Uh, this is a good one. Please talk about getting uh, new RBG rewards. Uh, how do you actually feel about uh, you know what an RBG RBGs? reward should be as a proxy? <laughs> is it still that bad? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't do RBGs, so I can't. I can't take that one. I don't like RBGs. I got nothing against yeah. people that do like, them, but I don't like battlegrounds. I like them in vanilla. And as soon as Burning Crusade came out and I had to farm like a bajillion battlegrounds per season just to get like your off pieces, that literally killed battlegrounds for me. Um, Cataclysm came out, everyone did RBGs, all my friends would queue up, I'd be like, don't talk to me. Like, I want nothing to do with these. Yeah. So, I, 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 I love a lot RBGs. Of classic, right did, now. did you start playing battlegrounds again in classic when you were playing a lot of classic? Oh, yeah. I, I enjoy battlegrounds in classic. I run up and I just press storm strike. I kill people instantly. It's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, I can't, I can't handle that. I'm not a I'm not a BG -er. I'd love if they had RBG rewards, but the problem is like RBGs have such a massive barrier to entry in terms of getting involved with them and playing them that the rewards either have to be exclusive in order for them to be compelling enough for people to do it. And if they make them exclusive, then I think people are going to get pissed off. So it creates this like really weird dynamic. And I don't know how Blizzard can make it even better, but I, uh, I, I'd love to do RBGs again. I, I think RBGs are probably my favorite thing to do in PvP. And unfortunately, there's just not really a lot of reason for it. And apparently, I think with like some teams, like nowadays, like there's not even going to be like a huge amount of people getting Hero of the Alliance. Maybe like one team or two teams. It's kind of sad, many, honestly. What is it? Twenty something? Two thousand X rated? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> well, sorry, RPG people. Yeah, I'd love to see it, but we'll see. I, you know, it's not necessarily the case that it's gonna, uh, it's gonna happen. I, I don't think Blizzard cares about RBGs, honestly. It seems like they don't. It, it seems weird they got rid of five v five because they couldn't, like, not that many people played them. But I feel like RBGs got to be more difficult for people to play, right? It's ten people yeah. instead of five. And then, like, you know, like anybody that plays RBGs knows, like, if you get in Discord, you lose one match, everybody, everybody's pissed off. Like, I'd say every single time you lose a match, like, you take, t there's like a 30% chance of you, of your group falling apart, and if you lose two matches, that 30% chance goes to, like, 90. Like, that's it. It's over. So, yeah, I, I, I do worry about that a lot, and uh, how hard it is to get a group together for that, especially with, like, the rewards not really being super compelling. We just got, like, a million good questions. Thank you, everybody, for, for sending in these questions. Uh, this one is kind of i like this question a lot but this one's kind of moving away from some of the other stuff that we've been talking about but uh has Sidu heard about ashes of creation and if so how does he feel about it I, i'm kind of curious Sidu, have you seen any of the stuff for ashes i only know it by name i've saw i've seen nothing about it i haven't watched the video i know that asmongold is very excited about it and i know that uh, some of the other wow people uh have heard about it but I, I don't know. I'm like super one dimensional. I live inside a little wild bubble. Um, and yeah, I guess I just suck. We're probably going to make a new podcast soon called All Creation, where we, we talk about it every week. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's funny seeing people's reactions to Ashes. Like every time you bring it up, people like freak out. They're either because like, yeah, it's super cool. Or they're like, no, it's the worst shit ever. It's it's like, like, yeah, because they don't, they don't want to have another game betray them like the yeah. other previous wow games i get why they're suspicious even like the lead dev for the the company that's making ashes is like yeah we fucking get it like they all understand yeah i, I think the cool good, thing about honestly. ashes is like you you hear some of the things with ashes like when you, you watch some of the ideas and you see what people get excited about and then you go like okay is this something that could be added to wow is it something that's it, I, I feel like there are a lot of things though yeah. that people do get excited for because it sounds really good on paper and it doesn't actually work in the game right like that's just how mm -hmm. games work I, and i think that sometimes we even forget stuff that's already existed in wow and we hate it and uh we people ask for it again right and some people are just coming to the game so maybe they didn't play it you know the player base changes over time i think ashes of creation is, does have some of that stuff and i think that that might be why some people freak out as well yeah i mean we'll see what happens uh, i'm ex i'm cautiously optimistic and excited for the game but i'd never say that you know you should pre-order any game that hasn't come out yet 
Yeah, I I I haven't um, pre-ordered it or anything like that. I'm still paying attention to it though. Yeah. Is there a release date for it? Nope. Not okay, even close. Okay. I'll probably, I'll probably eventually end up watching a video on it. I'm just, I don't know. I'm like super lazy. People are like, hey, watch this video. I'm like, nah. <laughs> we'll have to start doing like CD React streams. You know what I'm saying? Let me it's tell you something. It's, it's good, man. It's really good. It's good stuff. I believe it. I believe it. What's the next one, Rich? How alt friendly do you guys think Shadowland should be? So it's not like one of those questions that is like usually like how alt friendly do you think it is going to be based off of what you've seen? How alt friendly do you guys think it should be? In between Legion and Mists of Pandaria, I think. Uh, I think both of those expansions were alt friendly enough to where you were able to catch up on alts, but there was still a progression path that you had to take to where you weren't just immediately on the exact same level as your main. Well, Legion, the, the biggest grievance was probably how you obtained legendaries. Right. If you didn't have Until to obtain legendaries, yes. it, yeah. Toward towards the end, because I, I remember. Oh, uh, oh yes. So well, I, I'm only speaking about nine point three, very end of Legion. I'm yeah, not talking about I, like at the beginning at all. I, I remember even when because uh, C and I were raiding together at the time. Originally. Yeah, like remember we tried to have a few people like switch classes even, and you, you couldn't because of the legendaries. Like it was it was really tough at the beginning. Um, also, yeah, so early on Legion, artifact power is obviously a big problem. And then, uh, I don't know if you remember this, but from my point of view, as Legion, honor talents were terrible. And that never got fixed. If you made an ult, you could not perform at the highest level of PvP. Oh, yeah! <laughs> it's, got, it's got Axe, though, so that's good news. Yeah, they got but rid yeah. of that, thank God. And then remember yeah. whenever you'd Prestige and you'd lose them all? Oh my God! Oh, yeah. that was yeah. it wasn't. It. I never did that one time. I did it. I wanted the time. I wanted the achievement. Oh, no. <laughs> it oh, sucked. No. What's the next dude, one, dude? Oh, it, it's so funny because like I feel like this it, it keeps happening. Like you bring you remember even within this expansion, you go back two years and you forget some of the stuff that really sucked, and, and then yeah. all of a sudden you bring it up and you're like, oh my God, not again! Please, not again! Yeah. The prestige was like i get what they were going for the with the prestige thing i don't even look at that as like a huge mistake it, it was a, a valid idea that just didn't end up working but when you hear it again you're like oh my god how is that real um what do you think of the new arenas added in shadowlands i actually didn't even see these yet did you see them yet Cedu? i saw one and it it's hard to explain it looked really interesting but i also feel like it could impose a, a giant problem I, I feel like the best way for me to explain it is like almost like an inverse Nagrand arena where there's four pillars and the center is a complete box like it's open where you can't get in it so you can only play on the outer edge and I kind of feel like if there's no direct route to get to people it could be a huge game of cat and mouse like indefinitely on that arena map specifically does that make sense it looked really interesting but yeah it also looked like it could be a huge problem so imagine Dalaran arena where the 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 middle of it was just gone like the platform where you it's elevated yeah and you could only run on the outside um that, so it could, it could sounds, be really um, awkward yeah that sounds dumb i don't know i wonder find it i i honestly like i've been getting tilted about like warlocks jumping down on blade's edge mountain and teleporting back up for 15 years now so I mean, I, you, I, people getting tilted by Destro Warlocks is the theme of this expansion. So yeah, well, it's been a theme for me for a long time. So what even yeah, was the it. nerf for for Destro Warlocks? Because so I knew they got nerfed recently, right? So each no, the, those yeah, that nerf was actually irrelevant. Just so you're aware. That, so yeah, there, that's what I heard. Components of Soul Leech and one is they stand there and do nothing and gain a reasonably large absorb shield over and over. And then there's another one where a very small percentage of their damage gives them a shield. And they decided to nerf the one where the very small percentage of damage that they do gives them a shield instead of the one that just passively regenerates over time. In which case well, they have to do talent. half the <laughs> Right, right. So they, they nerfed the complete wrong part. And then, you know, another, another nerf that they do is a 5% armor reduction or something like it. Just completely relevant Backdraft. stuff. Warlocks are really... Warlocks are literally shamans. They're male with a shield right now in terms of armor. You know? Honestly, sometimes uh, I feel like they're something beyond even plate. 
Like, yeah. it's ridiculous. Okay. And just just so we're aware, because I like talking about this a lot, because I really ha I really despise Destro Warlocks, because... Let, let us know. Uh, so at the very start of the expansion, when Destro Warlocks weren't very good, they did a PvP-specific buff where Chaos Bolt hits 15% harder in Arena. They could have just gotten rid of that buff at some point in this expansion. So when you zone into Arena, by default, your Chaos Bolt hits 15% harder because they felt like it. Well, that just, makes getting one shot feel much better. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it just there's there's so much they could have done. Also, it really frustrates me that there's like changes that they're willing to do in Shadowlands, like removing that really obnoxious route that they won't do in this expansion, and like Greater Pyroblast having a 15 second cooldown. It's like, hey guys, we know this is messed up, but, but you're just gonna have to fucking play with it. More months. Exactly. A couple more months, guys, and you know there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, it's not it, like there's hundreds of thousands of dollars in tournaments on the line or anything, dude, you know? I tilted off the fucking planet whenever Ian was talking about how bad Azerite respecking was. And they just don't fix it? Yes. Yes. Uh, why? If it's bad, then just change it. I, I know I, that this is... So it, it's it's one of those things where it's like... I understand that there's probably a huge focus on development of the new expansion right now, but I also genuinely believe towards the end of the expansion, and this is terrible, but I feel like it's in their best interest for the game to suck, right? Because then when the new expansion comes out, if, if it was really bad, it's so much easier to be better than it. Is that is that really shitty? I've started to believe more and more no, that towards it's like the end of the expansion, you do a school, it's good for no, things to be bad. No, 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 Set no. the bar low. Well, yeah, yeah. It's like if you uh, like this is like school presentation meta. Is you want to wait until a group goes up there and all four people in the group don't know a fucking thing, and yeah, that, yeah. right after that you tell a teacher, listen, hey, you we raise your hand. Them. <laughs> like, hey, yeah, yeah, we'll go hey, next. Hey, yeah. My and, turn. and meanwhile, you go up there and it's like you know you've got fucking Albert Einstein up there explaining a volcano because the other people <laughs> behind you didn't know how a cloud was formed. You know they they thought clouds were made out of God. And so, like, these kinds of things, you know, and, and so you look like a genius here, you know, explaining things wrong because at least they sound right. Yeah, that's so, yeah, I think that's possibly the case. I don't think they're trying to make BFA bad. I think they just don't, I just don't think they care. That's I don't, there were, the, the corruptions at the end with how they were implemented, I was like, oh, yeah, there's, there's kind of like this moment of let, let's just make sure that people want it to be scrapped because it, if, People are asking for something to be removed for the game. It's a pretty easy thing to do. You remove from the game in the next expansion, you get an automatic win. Uh, this is a, a cool question. It said, with legendaries, do you want to see certain legendaries come back, like uh, Dragon Wrath, or like, basically the the legendaries where you go inside of a raid I, and you have the wall of change? I don't want to see Dragon Wrath come back, but I want to see something like Dragon Wrath come back. I thought it was fucking yeah. amazing. I'd love it, only though, if it was Mythic only. I don't want to see people doing normal mode and getting legendaries out of normal mode. It's just, it's just no. Yeah, I, I also think it's it's one of those things too where you're not really incentivized to do mythic uh, very much anymore in a weird way. It doesn't feel like you said. If some of the most powerful rewards are going to be able to grab in a lower difficulty, it, it's tough to justify for how much harder it is to, to actually do it yeah I, I do think in cdu how do you feel about legendaries because we obviously know we're going to get legendaries which are close I'm to the legion I'm legendaries excited for them, actually um i feel like the legendaries so a lot of people are like oh man legendaries are going to be really frustrating the way i look at them is almost like another talent tree right now uh -huh. um you know what I mean? They just give you a little bit more customization. I think some of them might be a little bit overpowered and maybe need to be tuned down a little bit, but there's some ones that I see that are really cool, and it's like, I can use this legendary versus comp, or I can use this legendary, uh, you know, in this situation, and that's kind of what the way I look at the game in every single scenario, is how can I use this to my advantage in PvP? So I kind of feel like it's a cool system. I, I actually think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I, the only legendary that I'm worried about apparently is there's one that is permanent CC reduction, which just blows my mind that, you know, why would anyone ever use a different legendary? Like, if they get rid of the choices by making really overpowered ones, then it's stupid. So, I, I like it right now. I like it. 
I don't really I don't really consider them legendaries, I guess, in that in that sense. I feel like legendaries are long gone. Um because when everyone has it, it's not very legendary. But yeah. Yeah. It's uh it, it's one of those things too where I think a lot of people get really caught up about the name legendary and like hearing like oh it's a legendary it should be like we can only have one or the other right it's like when i hear legendary in the game it's either got to be something that's like thunder fury or it's got to be something that's like frostmourne or shadowmourne rather yeah uh, that's i feel like the the best legendaries were personally i i mean i think that they can have multiple types of legendaries in the game and just call them different things right you can call them artifacts you can call them whatever the heck you want i think that having some rewards that aren't just stat sticks is is good in the game uh but yeah i do think that a lot like thunder fury is a really good legendary for a lot of reasons i think that uh valnir like those types of legendaries were good too i, I actually really do like the the quest chains that you have one person working on dragon at wrath probably atiash but uh, other than that uh, dragon wrath probably the best legendary ever made that was uh cataclysm right cataclysm uh fire yeah. stuff yeah, yeah. I, yeah, the, the I, fire I, so I personally like those so much more. I, I don't know. I just feel like you see people with that, and they're like, "This is awesome." And now it's like legendaries are just kind of like man mandatory, you know, must have to be relevant. More kind of mandatory fun. So somebody yeah. said, just call them class items. See, like I, I think something like that's perfectly fine. I still think that they're good for the game, though. Uh, and I, I think that the name doesn't really matter. Why can't you have both, though? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can have both. Uh, and I, I think a lot of people get caught up on the legendary thing, which is understandable. That's funny, though, that Asmund, you think that Dragonrath was one of the best ones. I always thought that my opinion towards Dragonrath was skewed because it was actually like the legendary that I finally got to get as a caster. But if you're saying that as somebody who's always played... Uh... Oh, no, you've always played Crack Monkey, though. So I guess you, you got wild it as well. animal now? This has been reported... Uh Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, boys have decided that, like, you know what? In 15 years, you've had this name. We're not doing 16. You're not, <laughs> a crack monkey's never going to learn how to drive. Not going to happen. Uh, so, yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah, I guess you got that legendary then, too. Oh, I, 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 always, I did like, the, all the videos for all the legendaries back in the day whenever I actually made original content. And, like, I, I did, yeah. like, these... Uh, I, I did the video for Dragon Earth. It was my favorite videos to ever do. I loved it, man. Uh, did you see C uh, what C Dude posted, by the way? Where I just posted the uh, the arena. If you want to show it on stream, if you can, it's not that big of a deal. But just to just to give you an idea of what it actually looks like, and if the viewers were interested. Okay, let um, me see here. I think center is actually cut out, right? So it's like it's, it's a, a cool looking strange, arena. But... I just don't know how it'll actually work out. And like, I guess you can um, you can shoot people over. Ooh, is that a hole in the middle? Exactly. You could shoot people over the hole, but if you actually want to chase people, you gotta you gotta take the long way. So. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> certainly. By the way, I just I just want to say really quick, it is completely my fault that the graphics are scuffed. That is not Asmund's fault. I'm in the middle of Ukraine right now, and yeah. I thought that I did everything right. I, I'm really so that's that's completely on me. But uh, welcome to the show, Hazel. Yeah. Hey, thanks. Glad to be here. But yeah, no, that is a that is a very cool idea. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, we'll see what happens. I think that it's glass now, and you could run over it. Oh, it's glass now. That's probably. I, I don't know. guess. I, I think maybe if they made like the the middle part a little bit lower, maybe that would be cool. I, I'm not really sure. I, I've never really thought a lot about like arena level design. I've always thought to myself like, ah, you know, Tolveron, you know, the Grand Arena. Okay, good, got it, done. Never really thought I mean, about I think, that. I think it should be a well balanced map regardless. Uh, I, I think the size is good. And having four pillars is always a nice thing. It gives you multiple uh, ways to reposition. Looks looks pretty good. Yeah. How do you feel about them adding uh, maps like to the rotation frequently and being kind of crazy? And if they don't work, scrapping them because I, I feel like there there were plenty of maps that they did that. Were pretty back in the day remember that it was ring of hour ring of hour yep remember did you ever do so there was this one uh this one uh arena back in wrath i think they had it in cataclysm 2 do you remember that fucking strat that they used to have in wrath where the Deep priest would fucking mind control you and run you into the fire 
yep. he would run you into the fucking fire and just damage you that way like oh it made me so mad Oh Dude, I'm God. I'm so old school. Do you remember getting divine hymned when it was a crowd control on the elevators up in that grand uh, ring of valor, and you would be coming out of the gates as you rose up from the elevator, and your whole team would be cc'd from divine hymn when it was a crowd control. What I did as a warrior is I spam charge, and I could also spam fear to do the same thing. It was so fucking broken, man. It was so broken. Have they ever like? Is there any way to to see it in the game currently? Like, can you any war game or anything? I, I didn't think you get rid of the waterfall on Dalaran, bro. Like that thing is like why? Not a fan of Dalaran, it. You know, the random waterfall that comes down. Just get rid of that. I think that there you should know? be more of like a timer to indicate that it's going to come down. If anything, I, I just don't think it needs to. It uh, I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's it's unnecessary. It seems super unnecessary now. And also the LOS on it is like super scuffed. Like it's weird. Yeah, it's it's just it's garby. People are saying remove or no, it's the same dude. It, there's one guy just like remove Mugambala. <laughs> Get rid of fucking. Yeah, he's probably Mugambala. playing a warrior or another melee class. Yeah, yeah. Hey dude, I fucking under, I agree with you. <laughs> Sucks. Yeah, Mugambala is definitely uh Mugambala is an interesting one, but the thing is, is even like let's say Mugambala is the worst map ever, just for the sake of the argument. I still think adding maps and trying out new maps oh, is kind of cool. I think maps are good, yeah. Yeah, and, and then the thing is, is if like everybody hates it, eventually just get rid of it. But I, I think it's kind of cool to have that, it. that theory. Like they would have to use that. They could use that theory for every aspect of the game, like visions or rotation on vendor. If everyone hates it, get rid of it. You know, but I don't think they. They like that theory very much. Yeah, the the thing is though too is it's like if you don't, it's, some things are obviously going to be different, right? Like visions, I feel like visions were uh, not not to go too far down that, but like visions, were like, if you didn't have to spam them for how long have they been out now? Two months. Six months, seven months, yeah. or maybe that's too long. I, I it's close to that, right? If we weren't doing visions for six months, I think the conversation would be completely different. Um, maps are obviously way different because they inherently need to last for a very long time but yeah i think if visions if you didn't have to spam for six months uh, people might actually have viewed them fondly what do you guys think about bringing back arena points scaling off arena rating again like bc wrath uh where with arena rating required for gear so basically seems what do you think about, about the old system seems, yeah i, I just like feel like it was a system that worked I don't. I, yeah, I, I'm kind of one of the people. That if it if it's not broken, don't fix it, and they're just they're just breaking it. You know what I mean? It just it feels like they try something new every single expansion too. It's so strange. Yeah, I see it, that. It, it's one of those things where it's like in certain aspects, I think we all want new things, right? Like we want the we want the game to grow, but also you can't just completely like like. I think Legion's the best example. Correct me if I'm wrong. At the very end of Legion, a lot of things felt fixed, and you didn't want to see them get thrown away. Uh, but then they got thrown away, and then they started a new system, and then that system was scuffed. I, I feel like that's the flow that's bad. Not just getting new things, or not just things uh, being bad. It's like once something gets fixed, they then add something that's broken and get rid of the fixed thing. I think uh, one example of something they kept that was good was Mythic Plus, obviously, right? But I don't yeah. like how they made it so you couldn't switch your gear. I felt like that wasn't necessary. Now, this is as a competitor, bless you, uh, as a competitor, I, I'm curious of what your opinion is. I feel like that is completely because of MDI. I, I feel like a lot of those changes to Mythic Plus were we got to make MDI work uh, best way possible. And I've always said this, uh, even even for Arena, for, for MDI, for literally every eSport, the game should not be balanced around the esport. The tournament rules and the format of the tournament should make sure that the competitive integrity is That's there. The game should be as it, yeah. fun as possible. I, yeah, I agree with that, actually. I feel like that's why uh, some of the things in Dungeons are scuffed, though. But Dungeons look a lot better. That is, that is one of the things, besides the, the Covenants themselves, Dungeons, I know a lot of people who really love Dungeons and been playing them a whole bunch. I, I saw Sloot tweet out today. I saw a lot of people tweeting out about the new affix being really, really fun. Uh, the new seasonal affix being really fun. And I think that people are overall positive about Dungeons right now. 
So that that could be a good sign. I personally uh, don't run many Mythic Plus or care much for them, but I I think the seasonal asp uh, what's it called? Affix. Affix. The seasonal affix for this season has been by far I think the most interesting one mm -hmm. to exist because you don't need specific classes to do skips, and you can actually you know make your own routes and, and whatnot. So I kind of feel like that was nice. You used to run dungeons a whole bunch like when they first came out like i, I remember watching you, you do dungeons you to, oh man you had to that's how you get gear wait did you ever do them for fun in or... legion i would say that i actually kind of did them for fun but at the same time i was also kind of trying to get legendaries you know what i mean okay yeah because i'm thinking back to legion like i have I, I don't know why i have a, a very vivid memory of being at work before I got fired from Blizzard the first time. And I was at work and I was watching you. Maybe this is why I got fired. I was watching you on my monitor and you were inside. Oh man, what's that one called? Uh, where you, it starts with the waterfall. I've already forgotten its name. I feel uh, like I know exactly what you're talking about. No, yeah, it was in your stream. Uh, I, I, I just well, remember well, watching well, your... Uh, yeah, no, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I just remember... I, I just remember watching and, and you were having fun and it didn't seem like you were farming gear. And I was like, man, bunch of pve content from cdu this is awesome like i'm excited to watch it and then over time you know stuff stuff definitely changed but do you think that there's anything that they could do in mythic plus to actually make you want to just do it for fun again i don't know um i think that personally healing is incredibly boring for the most part and i think i played dps more in legion like i had a lot of fun playing my death knight in mythic plus mm -hmm. uh frost decay and holy decay uh things like that um i do think that the legendary reward was like getting the legendary out of Mythic Plus was probably the most rewarding thing from Mythic Plus. Other than that, you're just like kind of farming sockets. Um, I would say that if there was a higher item level cap on Mythic Plus gear, depending on how far you push the key, like right now it's 465 at 14, I believe. If you could get up to a 20 and get like 470 or 475 to actually get Mythic level um, Mythic Plus gear at an incredibly difficult key, I think I would push really high keys for that. For that, that'd be gear. fucking cool. Yeah, I'd like yeah. that a lot. At, at a really, at a really tough difficulty, obviously, right? Um, but that would that would uh, want me to that would make me do Mythic Plus, because if there's no reward behind it, like I don't need the gear, I don't want to do Mythic Plus. It's boring as hell. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, anyway, uh, uh, Sidu, is there anything say. that you want to talk about before we uh, before we wrap up? Uh, you want to bring uh, up on the show? I don't think so. I mean, I, I feel like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super one dimensional when it comes to this kind of stuff. I just kind of right. PVP. And I think, I think we've talked about quite a bit of that, um, in terms of like, you know, the sockets and the season and stuff like that. But yeah. Yeah. It's certainly, uh, I, I think right now the covenant stuff and all of the systems that they're adding into shadowlands really does leave people with the question of, is this going to work? and right. i'm very very concerned i think that that's why we do this show that's why we're talking about it all the time i know probably some people are probably tired of hearing hearing us talk about covenant so much but it's just such a big issue and i don't know what's going to happen with it i'll say that for sure i'm quite concerned i think one of the things that we've noticed so far with shadowlands beta yeah. is they're definitely actively taking feedback you know they they already made a, a change with the conduits you know they made changes with shadow priests you know i think some of the shaman dps spec i think they're paying really close attention um but i definitely think there's some some level of you know understanding that they know there's a problem and i guess maybe they're trying to do some work around so i i think that the feedback is really good and i think blizzard is listening so um i would say that overall i'm personally excited for shadowlands and I think the only thing that's going to screw it up is the systems themselves. So I feel like if they just get those ironed out, I think it should be a really good expansion. Yeah, I agree with that entirely. Well, anyway, man, I do really appreciate you coming on the show and being part of it. Uh, it's always yeah. good to have a you know actual like good player come on and explain kind of what's going on. Yeah, hell yeah, <laughs> man. Thank you very much. I also, do you know what time your uh, your series is? For Saturday, where I think we're the fifth series, and honestly, I don't even know what time it starts at. Uh, okay, it starts at either twelve Eastern or two Eastern, so I would just estimate every uh, game to be about three hours long. So we might play by Sunday morning. Okay, all right, sounds good. You guys heard it here. Sunday morning, go out in full force. Cheer for Cedu. He's going to be yep. competing in the AWC. 
with literally the team that he was able to take down BlizzCon with, are they going to be able to do it in the new circuit play? Definitely go support him. Also, go follow his stream if you haven't already. I mean, I think it's probably impossible at this point to have not followed CD stream if you watch World of Warcraft at all. Thank you very much for coming on, Sidu, uh, and we wish you all the luck in the AWC this weekend. Hell yeah, Thank man. You, man. Thanks a lot for yes, coming sir. on and being part of it. And obviously, if you guys want to stick around, Rich and I are going to do the after show like we always do, take questions from callers and all the different kind of community stuff that we like to do. So uh, thank you very much, guys, for watching. Thank you again, Sidu. Uh, make sure to follow his stream, follow his Twitter, Twitter, follow them everywhere except for in real life and in game. So, yeah, thanks a lot for coming on, man. I fucking appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, guys. Take care. All right, I'll see you guys later. Peace. Peace.